Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to get custom models to import for each Pikmin in Pikmin 3 and Pikmin 3 Deluxe. This will be a continuation of a video made by Vinicius, which shows you how to create custom captain models in Pikmin 3 Deluxe. I followed this video and it worked perfectly for the captains. However, I ran into a bit of an issue when doing the same thing for Pikmin, which is why I decided to create a video on what I found. So the mod that I'm working on is going to have all Chow as the Pikmin models, the Chow are from the Sonic Adventure game. I'm going to have those as unique colors and they're going to replace the Pikmin models in the game. So here is a red Pikmin model. And as you can see here, it has multiple different materials, multiple objects. And I have the same exact model here applied to player C, which is the same model that Charlie uses. As you can see, also uses different materials, different objects. And I believe that there's four different texture files that are being used in the model that you see here. Now we will see what this looks like in the game. As you can see here, the model for the captain does load correctly, however the Pikmin model looks a little different. And the reason why this is happening is because Pikmin use a single texture file rather than multiple different texture files. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in the toolbox. Okay, so if you look at each of the Pikmin here, they will all only have one object and one material applied to each one of them. Each captain is allowed to use multiple materials and textures, which is why the captain model loads correctly, but the rest red Pikmin that we have here does not load correctly. It only loads in the first material that we have here rather than all four of them at the same time. And I'm going to show you how to fix that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to need to get all of the meshes for this object into a single mesh. And the way that you're going to do that is by selecting all of the meshes here, going to object at the top, and then join. If you have any graphical issues like what happened here, make sure to correct this in the UV Editor tab. Make sure also that there's only a single UV map because that will be important in a minute. I'm going to show you how I corrected the textures for the scarf, then I'm going to do the same for the rest of the model. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do, I actually want to view the shading for the object because I want to know which one I'm going to actually be making changes to. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do, I'm actually going to change the UV map to this third one right here, and I'm going to apply the textures to the eyes as well as the scarf. And the reason why I picked this one here is because this one has the most amount of detail. It's going to be easier for me to match up the UV maps for the scarf as well as the eyes as opposed to doing it for the feet. So I'm going to get rid of these other two, and I'm only going to be working on this one right here. So I'm going to show you how I do the scarf. So first I'm going to select the four panes here, then I'm going to go to UV. UV unwrap, and I want to make sure that I have the scarf texture applied on the side here in the UV editor, and I'm just going to line these up. So I'm going to select these four, mirror over the X axis. Actually, no, I'm going to mirror it over the Y axis, make these line up, because I want it to be the same on both sides. It's going to be a mirrored portion. I'm going to rotate it. Scale it. Okay, and that looks pretty good for the scarf. So once I have that completed, I'm going to do the same thing for the eyes, and then I will be back for the next steps. Okay, so once you have your model completed and there's only a single UV map, I can show you on the side here, I only have a single UV map. You're going to make a new UV map that I will call Post Burn. Make sure that Post Burn is selected and you are viewing the other UV map. So I have this selected, I'm viewing the first UV map. The rest of the changes I'm going to make from here on are going to be done in the shading tab. So I will go into the shading tab and I'm going to get these windows how I want them to be. So I'm going to have the UV editor at the top here, the image viewer at the bottom here, and I'm going to have my model displayed at the top and I'm going to have material properties listed on the side here. Okay, so in the shader editor window, you're going to create a new image texture, which you can do by going to add texture, image texture. Then we're going to create a new image that's going to hold the texture map for the model. I'm going to call this Tex KNU. That's going to be the texture for the Knuckles model. You can leave this at 1024 by 1024. Just keep in mind that the larger the image is, the more detail it's going to have. However, that can also 
make the image slower to load in in the actual game. You can set the image to a smaller resolution if you would like to, but you may need to rearrange the map that you create. I'm going to leave a few videos in the description as well that you can view on how to do this if you would like to. The smaller the file size, like I said, the faster the game is going to run. Okay, now that I have this image created, I'm going to go to the UV editor here. I'm going to view the image that I just created. I'm going to do the same thing in the image viewer. Okay, next you're going to want to copy the image texture that you created in the shader editor window and paste them in all the materials for your current project. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go to the body portion here, paste, and I'm going to do that for the rest of the materials. Make sure as well that you have the Material Properties tab open as well. Once you have these pasted, go through each material again and click the Image Texture box again, ensuring that it is selected. If you look at the Material Properties tab and this section here where it shows Base Color, it may have an image here. Make sure that this is not highlighted blue. I did have that with a few other models that I was working on, but make sure that these are not selected and you click these again after you've pasted them, ensuring that it is selected. So I'm going to go back to each one of these materials here and just re-click each one of these. Okay, once you have that done, you're going to select your object, go into the edit mode for the object, and then do select all. Once you have it selected, you should have the individual rectangles for the mesh separated over here, and we're going to go to UV at the top here, Smart UV Project, and I'm going to set the island margin to 0 .003 so that there's a little bit of space between each portion of the mesh. Once I click OK, it should make a map, which is what we're going to burn all of the textures onto. Make sure as well you also rearrange the mesh in the UV editor however you would like to. The larger these islands are going to be, the more detail they're going to have, and the smaller they are, the less detail they're going to have. So things with a lot of color, or things with a lot of solid colors on them, such as like the entire body or the back of the head here, they do not need to be that big. However, something like the eyes, the larger they're going to be, like I said, the more detail that they're going to have. And you're going to play around with this, you're going to have another chance to play around with this after you burn it, so then you can see what it looks like. Okay, now we're going to burn these textures. Make sure that you save your project at this point, because once the burn takes place, it's not something that can actually be reversed. If you do burn it, and it does need to be reversed, make sure to close the window and then reopen it. So I'm going to go into the render properties here, change the render engine to cycles, and that way I can have the bake option listed down here. In the sampling tab, I'm going to make sure max samples is set to only one. If it's set to anything higher than one, it's not going to change the final product, so it's just going to save more time than anything if we set it to one. Now we're going to go to the bake tab here, change the bake type to diffuse, and get rid of the direct and indirect lighting. So we're not burning the lighting that's currently on this object onto the map. We're just going to burn the colors. Then, once you're ready to bake it, make sure to save your project one more time, and then click Bake. Okay, so if it bakes properly, the model that you have should not have looked any different. And the reason why it doesn't look any different is because you have the pre-burn UV map currently viewing. However, the post-burn map does look a bit different. If you need to add more detail to the map, you can rearrange the mesh by going into the Edit mode again and select All. Things like these large portions of red can be much smaller, and things like, for example, if I want the eyes to be a bit more detailed, you can take the rectangles or the islands for the eyes and make those larger. And you can bake this as many times as you need to at this point. It's not going to affect the quality of the original image, it's only going to affect the texture map that we're making. Now, to ensure that it works, we're going to go to the Material Properties tab, and we're going to remove all of the materials that are on here. I'm going to have to go back into object mode and then remove all of the materials that are on here. I'm going to create a new material. And we're going to add a texture, a image texture, and we're going to select the texture file that we just created on the side here. Make sure to click and drag the color to the base color of the object. And then we're going to go to UV editing view the post burn and get rid of the any other UV maps that you have on here. If you have any other UV maps in here 
Once you export your model, it's not going to load correctly into the game because once you export it, it will only accept a single UV map. Okay, now if the textures appear how they're supposed to on your model, then you've done it correctly. Be sure to save your texture file and export your project as a FBX with FBX full enabled. And then we're going to import this into our toolbox. Okay, so here's the old model for the red Pikmin that we had a moment ago, the one that did not work correctly. I'm going to right click it, click on replace. And we're going to replace it with the FBX that we just created. Those are all fine. We're going to enable vertex colors, so then the colors will display in the game. And we're going to change the material. And I just changed the material to this material character BFMAT file, which is something that I just ripped off of another Pikmin. So the materials here, if you click on export, you can just rename this to whatever you would like to, and you can import that as the material for the red Pikmin that I'm importing in this case. You may also need to import the textures, so if you right-click the textures portion here, I'm going to click on Import Textures, and I'm going to get the texture that I just created. I'll click on OK. And I'm going to, if your image does not show the textures correctly on here, you may need to go under the Pikmin itself, go to the Materials folder, and change the material here to the one that you just imported. The reason why I have two of them here is because the first one, the first texture file here is being applied to player C, and the second one here is the one that I just created. So I'm going to click on save, and if your model looks correct in here, it should work just fine in the game. So I'm going to save this, and we're going to see what this looks like in the game. Okay, so it does look like the model's imported correctly. The model that's currently being applied to the Pikmin is also the same model that's being used to affect the players, so this can work for both of those now. I hope you've learned something new today about how to import custom models. I hope to have this Chow mod completed soon, so be sure to check back for any updates on that if you are interested. If you have any other questions or recommendations on this topic, please let me know in the comment section. If you also enjoy modding content, be sure to give this video a like or subscribe to my channel, as it does help me out a lot. All of my content is free, so any support or feedback you could provide me helps out tremendously. I hope to see you all again soon, and yeah, thank you for watching.